Hey guys, Trey here. Um, quick discussion this morning. I've got a virtual meeting to attend to in a little bit, so I'm going to try to keep this a little bit shorter than normal. Uh, but we have a severe weather threat today uh, across much of Oklahoma, northwest Texas, northern Texas, into far southern Kansas, uh, with the activity looking to be centered on northwest Texas at least initially, and then moving into much of uh, central Oklahoma by this evening. So let's get started here. Um, the visible satellite here to start uh, shows we have an area of convection that's starting to uh, fire here across Kansas and western Oklahoma. If we look at the radar, we do have some showers and thunderstorms firing up uh, to the west of the I-35 corridor. Um, there's some even some lightning out here between Elk City and Weatherford in that little convective cell. Uh, that's not going to be a player today. Uh, if we look at our satellite here, we can see kind of a, a tongue of low-level moisture here located uh, in West Texas, um, basically from Del Rio uh, and in, down into Mexico northward uh, into the southern, very southern rolling, rolling plains of Texas. And if we look at our surface map here, we can verify that. Let's go ahead and zoom in. This is as of a minute ago. Uh, and we've got... You can see over much of Oklahoma, dew points are marginal, and the Texas Panhandle dew points are marginal at best, uh, mostly 40s, low to mid 40s out here um, across the target area right now. But we do have this tongue of enhanced dew points down here. Uh, we can see 60s here. Midland is 68 over 60 right now. Uh, and we have this kind of tongue of higher dew points here uh, that coincides with those low clouds we were seeing on visible satellite. That is expected to move northward as the day progresses, uh, as we get strong surface cyclogenesis out in eastern New Mexico into the Texas Panhandle. That's going to bring that moisture northward into our target area. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and look at our uh, surface map right now. This is on SPC Mesoanalysis. We see, let's go ahead and zoom in here real quick. We do have some sort of cy uh, cyclonic circulation down here in southeast New Mexico right now, some semblance of, of cyclonic circulation with kind of a warm front looking thing extending into uh, southwest and southern Texas. And if we go back out, we see we have uh, another sort of uh, feature uh, that's up here in the South Dakota, uh, south southwest South Dakota region uh, with a cold front extending southward uh, from that. Um, if we look, let's go ahead and look at our atmosphere, the entire atmosphere. Now here's 500 millibars, positive tilt, closed trough here, up centered in southern Montana, northern Wyoming. That's going to drop to the southeast as we go through the day today. Um, and it, it, you can see this if we go on uh, in time here. Our jet max moves to the south, so uh, we're probably going to get southeast for moving, southeast for propagating storms today. Uh, as this jet max uh, sort of starts to impinge on the region. Let's look at 700 millibars. We can see a nice short wave here across the uh, high plains, uh, just to the lee of the Rockies here, um, with kind of a moisture tongue coinciding with where our showers and storms are firing up this morning. So nice short wave firing those storms off. That'll move off to the east as the day progresses. We've got some other little uh, sort of blips uh, in the flow there. Uh, this would be six hours from now, so 19Z. Uh, we have a little short wave left in western Oklahoma there, and then in um, eastern New Mexico there could be, you could argue there's one uh, that could help us later on this afternoon if it uh, enters uh, our target area. 850s, let's go ahead and zoom in. You can see we have a, a long fetch. Actually, let's go back out here. Very lo long fetch of strong 850 millibar winds. Very strong low-level jet out here, upwards of 50 knots here into Kansas, northeast, northwest Oklahoma, northeast Texas Panhandle. That should remain as we go throughout the day today. Go on here, six hours, still that nice pocket of 30 to 35 knot low-level jet out there over much of uh, central Oklahoma into northern Texas. Uh, and then our moisture. Our moisture is kind of in question. Anytime you see 40s dew points in your target area the morning of a severe weather event, you should be a little worried. 
Um, but uh, again, we're going to get surface cyclogenesis uh, throughout the uh, afternoon. Again, this is our surface map. We go forward, look, we get very strong surface cyclogenesis out there in northeast New Mexico, western Texas panhandle. Uh, so that should, in theory, really strengthen the low-level wind fields uh, out of the south, southeast, and we should get very strong moisture reduction to the north, uh, very rapid moisture reduction to the north with this uh, well-defined of a surface low. So I do think those 60s dew points will make their way up here into uh, probably northwest Texas, uh, maybe parts of the Texas Panhandle, southwest Oklahoma. Somewhere in here, I think, is probably going to be the northward extent of the best moisture. Uh, and models are actually progging somewhat of a dry line bulge to form. Uh, here's our the latest wrap model. Uh, don't have the 12Z runs of our typical models, the NAM, the GFS in right now. but So we'll use the 9Z wrap from a few hours ago. But you see that tongue of moisture down there by Del Rio. And we get rapid moisture returns throughout the day. This is uh, this is uh, basically current time. And then we fast forward seven hours. We already have 60s dew points up into southwest Oklahoma. So we should get very rapid uh, moisture return. You see that kind of dry line bulge there uh, just to the west of the Childress area. That should help with low-level convergence as well. Wind should be out of the, the west-southwest to the west of that bulge and out of the southeast to the east of that bulge. So you should get enhanced convergence here and I would think you should get a nice supercell to fire or two to fire right there along that dry line bulge and move southeast. And the, the storm uh, motion today, again it's southeasterly so it's going to be able to instead of moving uh, west to east whereas where our moisture corridor is pretty narrow if it moves southeast, it should have a much longer residence time in this moisture uh, plume. So uh, I would uh, think that we should get uh, at least one or two supercells today, especially if we get that short wave to move through in our 500 millibar uh, flow a jet max to kind of impinge on the region. We should get maybe one or two supercells to form right along that dry line bulge in northwest Texas, southwest Oklahoma. The Childress, Vernon areas uh, would be a good place to start today and that storm will move southeast. Uh, again, let's take a look at our, how, if the storms are going to be discrete. They, they should be. Uh, we have a nice kind of north, southwest, south southwest to north northeast dry line. Uh, our bulk shear vectors are going to be uh, northwesterly, uh, so we should have a very nice uh, orthogonal uh, storm motion and shear vector. Yep, very nice shear vector. You can see that semblance of the dry line there in this in the Cape field here. Pretty much purely orthogonal to the dry line. Uh, so we should get we, uh, discrete storms for sure today. Don't have a cold front to deal with like we did with our last setup that might make things a little bit more messy, a little bit more linear. Today should be purely dry line forced. So we should have nice, discrete supercells today. So photographers, get your cameras out. It could be a very, very good day today. Um, let's take a look at some soundings from across the region to assess the quality of the moisture. Let's go down to where that tongue of moisture was. Uh, this is the Del Rio sounding from 12Z this morning. 73 over 57. We can see we kind of have a lot of dry air aloft here. Uh, so that could be an issue, a uh, little bit of dry air entrainment into the updraft, but uh, that might even make for better structure, a uh, little bit more LP structure. Uh, if it can uh, evaporate some of that precipitation aloft, we might get a little bit uh, better structure today, less messy storm modes uh, than we had with our last event uh, in Oklahoma last uh, in the last few days. But a lot of elevated instability here uh, with a very stout elevated mixed layer, steep lapse rates aloft, very steep lapse rates aloft. Our zero, our three to six kilometer lapse rate uh, is 7.5, very steep. Uh, wind profile's wonky, but once that, this is kind of, this is well removed from uh, where our um, best winds aloft are going to be. Let's go to Midland here. Kind of the same thing, even more stout of a cap but extremely steep lapse rates aloft here. Very steep lapse rates aloft. Three to six kilometer lapse rate, 8.1. And right here, our elevated mixed layer, this showing 9.1 degrees Celsius per kilometer. That is very, very steep. Uh, and definitely 
definitely producing a stout cap, so we're going to need that convergence from the dry line bulge, uh, that extra convergence from the dry line bulge to, to get storms going, I think, today. Down south along the dry line, away from that bulge, I think it's going to be tough to get a storm. Convective temperatures, 94 degrees. Uh, so if we check our surface temperature progs, um, it's going to be tough right along that dry line to get storms. Uh, I think you definitely have a chance to get one or two down here along the, the main part of the dry line, especially with seeing with how warm the temperatures are behind it. Uh, we should get very strong mixing uh, that, that could allow a storm or two to form down here along the dry line. But we're gonna, I think we're going to need this uh, convergence along the dry line bulge to really get a robust storm going today. So somewhere in this area. Um, again, back to our soundings though. Moisture quality is a little bit in question as you go aloft. Some drier air, um, but uh, that's not, it shouldn't be too detrimental. If anything, it might enhance the downdraft potential. Um, usually when you have uh, uh, dry air aloft, that promotes evaporative cooling. And when you get that, you get uh, downdrafts to be a little bit stronger than they would otherwise with a more moist uh, um, atmospheric profile. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at some forecast soundings how, and see how this um, environment ev uh, evolves throughout the day. Again, we have that moisture plume surging northward as we get cyclogenesis out here. You can see that when we that surging moisture coincident with very strong surface cyclogenesis out in the Texas Panhandle, eastern New Mexico. Um, our 500 millibar pattern, we'll zoom out here to see the entire thing. Uh, you can see our positive tilt trough up there, close low, and that's going to sag southeastward. And right about 21, 22Z is when we get our kind of our jet max to start impinging, our greater forcing to impinge onto the region here near that dry line bulge. Um, 850s, we'll see how they progress throughout the day. Uh, see, again, we see that swath of very strong uh, low-level jet out there in the plains. That's going to kind of stick around in the southern plains today. And uh, as we get surface cyclogenesis there, we're going to get a strengthening of the low-level jet um, at dark. Uh, so that could be interesting as well. By about 0Z, we've got about 40 knots out there right near our dry line bulge. So that could help sustain storms a little bit longer. Um, and let's if we take a forecast sounding uh, from our dry line bulge area. Let's take it at 22Z. Uh, dew points here in the upper 60s. I think that's a little bit of a stretch here. 67 is probably too high. I think low 60s are a good bet. Uh, but if we take a sounding right near our dry line bulge, I would expect to see very steep lapse rates aloft, large looping hodos, and that's exactly what we see. Lots of instability mixed layer cape of almost 4,000 joules per kilogram here. Steep, steep lapse rates aloft all uh, between 8 and 9 degrees Celsius per kilometer. That is going to promote very, very large hail in any storms that form. Um, we also have adequate uh, shear. Deep layer shear holographs are very long, fairly straight at this point. Um, so that will promote uh, sp potentially splitting supercells with very large hail. Um, potentially significant severe hail, upwards of two to maybe even three inches uh, in any storm that forms. Uh, tornado threat today is also is going to be on the lower side. Our temperature dew point spreads are pretty high here. This sounding we pulled 90 over 66, and again, I think that the dew points here are a little bit overdone. Uh, so I think something, you know, maybe in the 85 to 90 degree temperature range with dew points uh, maybe 58 to 63. Those temperature dew point spreads very unfavorable for tornadoes, uh, but as we go toward dark, there is a window, I think. This is at 1Z, right about sunset. Here's our, we'll take a sounding from the dry line bulge. Uh, you can see our spreads come down a little bit, um, cap, but capping starts to increase, so there might be a brief, brief window, right about 0 to 0, 01Z where we could squeeze out a brief tornado. You can see photographs by that point are very large and looping in the low levels. Uh, a lot of helicity, a, f a zero to three kilometer storm relative helicity of about 500. Slightly convectively contaminated, but you can see that cap starts to uh, intrude into our environment again. So 
Tornado threat, pretty, pretty much zero today, although you can't rule a brief one out with any storm that forms near the dry line bulge. Um, if we take a look at our HER, our convective allowing model, our other convective allowing models are not in yet, but this is the 12Z HER. We see those showers in western Oklahoma throughout the day, and then we see we get a storm or two to fire right along that dry line bulge by about 5 p.m., 22Z this afternoon. That sustains itself, uh, and we get just a nice lone supercell at sunset. Uh, this should be a photographer's dream today. Uh, with as much vort uh, stream-wise vorticity as there is, uh, it, judging by these photographs, lots of stream-wise vorticity. Uh, you can see here that's a little bit more scientific than we need to get into, but large looping photographs with a little bit of inhibition. Usually that, that marriage means that there's going to be very nice structure with these storms today. So we could get some pancakes today, um, something like the Denver City, Texas supercell from May 4th, 2019, uh, last year. Uh, or even if some of you remember the Vega, Texas supercell from May 2012, uh, had some nice pancakes on it. Uh, definitely don't think that's out of the question today. So again, threats today, probably large hail uh, and damaging winds, the main threats. Tornado threat is non-zero, but it's very, very low given the high temperature dew point spreads and the inhibition that remains but I think uh, if you're out chasing today, definitely expect a very well-structured supercell with uh, potentially two to three inch hail, uh, significant severe hail uh, is going to be your chasing hazards today. So uh, if you're chasing that out there today, good luck. This is going to be different from our last couple setups where they've been a little bit messier, uh, a little bit uh, more fast moving storms. Should be a nice slow moving supercell, isolated supercell. Uh, so definitely get your, your DSLRs out today for, for that. Um, overnight tonight, um, going to be that uh, cold front from our, our surface low up in the uh, Dakotas. It's going to sag south. We're going we're gonna to get convective initiation on that. But should be very messy, very much a linear mode tonight um, in Oklahoma, much of Oklahoma and into um, even northern Texas, northeast Texas as the in the early morning hours. But... Should be a squall line moving through the Oklahoma City metro area at some point, uh, but right about midnight or so, according to the HER here. Uh, definitely not really chase worthy though, unless you're going out for some lightning opportunities. Damaging winds uh, going to be the main threat out of this, uh, with the strong linear forcing from that. But our main show for chasing is going to be our discrete supercells along the dry line here this afternoon. So, if you're chasing out there today, good luck. Um, I'll be heading out as well, uh, hoping to get some good shots today, uh, maybe some big hail. Uh, so uh, I will see you out there under the mezzo. Thanks for watching. Never stop chasing.